soldiers to shoot, Hollywood Edwards and General Stames here today to discuss some WWE booking in general. I think it's very important that we touch upon this. Coming off the show that we put out last night of Captain of Swag discussing uh, SmackDown and going back to Monday on the Raw review you and I did and the pre show that we did for Raw. General Stames, um, you know why we're here, correct? I do. On Sunday night, we did a bit of a fantasy. Well, it was actually Sunday night and a Monday, some fantasy booking. And uh, it would appear that I think we're on to something. I think something is in the air. The What did Wade Barrett used to say? The winds of change are here or something like that. The winds of change are blowing. There you go. Yes. That was Nexus Wade Barrett, though. That was not the great Bad News Barrett. Mm. Or King Barrett. That was a great gimmick, Bad News. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I would laugh every time. Never got old. (laughs) Never got old. I would legit laugh every time at that guy. Where the hell is he? I don't know. Hopefully we'll see him somewhere. It would be nice to see him again. Yeah. Even if it were in Las Vegas, say in May. Oh! Maybe. Be, be nice. Be nice. So this is what I want to talk about today. Tonight. Whatever. Coming off Tuesday night SmackDown. And coming off hearing Captain of Swag's show yesterday. It would appear that the WWE is now booking the main title picture with Daniel Bryan and Kofi and now Kevin Owens exactly like they are booking the Raw Women's Division with Ronda, Becky, and Charlotte. That's and correct. I, for one, cannot look at this and get angry because after last night, what they did with Kofi, the exact same thing that they did with Becky and Charlotte, we are being worked. I am very confident that this is going to lead somewhere and probably the removal of Vince McMahon from television. Yeah, we actually did speak about this on Sunday night. Now, of course, I had this huge, overdone, elaborate plan that involved Arn Anderson and possibly Bruce Pritchard and... Of course, the rest of the McMahon family and so on and so on. And, you know, knowing WWE, it probably won't get that big. But uh, it'd probably be at least a family struggle, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm leading to. You know, right here on Soldiers of Shoot, Captain of Swag, Tuesday. If you haven't heard that show and you're listening to this, go back and listen to it. But he said something that triggered me. Triggered my brain. And what he said was, this is all, you know, nonsense booking. And he was trying to, you know, not freak out and do a rant like he usually does. He was pretty calm. And I started thinking to myself, you know, could it be that Vince has totally lost his mind? Yes, it could very well be that fact. But. I think for it to be a carbon copy of what's going on on Raw. I mean, that it got the ball rolling that he didn't want to rant, you know, in my mind. And I was thinking it's a carbon copy. And specifically, it was the fact that Vince came out and took a crap on the apology that Triple H and Steph demanded from Becky. That happened. Vince took a crap on it. SmackDown opened up with a contract signing. Stephanie and Shane are in the ring, and Vince came out and took a crap on it. He did. So to me, it is glaringly obvious what's going on here. And all that crazy stuff that's driving us crazy, the fact that it is a carbon copy, I got to think it's work. And I got to think they are intentionally doing it because they're paying attention to what we say, what everybody says that they have just lost their way with booking. I think it is too obvious 
for him to come out and step on the toes of the three other McMahons in the McMahon story. Yeah, and he's it's almost as if he's playing the role of the guy that all the IWC people talk about. You know, Vince McMahon, the 73-year-old out of touch, uh, can't book anymore, old man, uh, you know, so on and so on. And man, oh man, it just seems – and I even said to you, he even looks older. Like, And I don't know, maybe he just looks older. But I asked you, is he wearing makeup to make himself look that bad? Because mm. he looks horrible. I don't know. Like, did he sell his soul to the devil and he knows it's time to pay? Or what is going on? Because he just looks, dude, he looks like he aged 10 years in the last year. Totally. Totally. So I was even thinking, you know, are they are they doing something to him makeup wise to make him look like an old, crazy, senile guy, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I think it's starting to point in the direction that and and dude, you know, for good reason. We had a show where we talked about this. He's got a lot on his plate right now with the Fox deal, with the football thing coming up. Maybe he just needs some time off. And we read that story online about, uh, you know, they were worried about the stock taking a big hit if he would walk away from WWE. I think it might be a genius thing for them to kind of write him off in a storyline. And, bro, you had even some ideas to take this story eight months from now or a year from now to bring them back. I mean, this thing could play on forever. Yeah. Or at least a very long time. Yeah. And that was another thing too that AC said, he uh, mentioned the fact that I was texting him last night and we were discussing this booking. And he said on his show that we, you know, I said ba basically they're doing that. They're trying to write him off the story. And to that point, AC said, well, he just got back on TV. Actually, and that's what you told me earlier today. Wasn't that yes, the point you made to That me? was the point, yes. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. That's what's going on here. Because if you remember, he wasn't on TV. Why did he come back on TV? when they teased all the McMahons were going to be on there for the ratings grab. And that was the night that they all came out and he said, we're going to give you more of what you want and less of what you don't want. He had no intention of coming back to TV, but he had to, he felt. So yes, it's time to write him off again. That's what I think is, is happening here. And I, so go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, so, what do you see as, you know, the next step? Well, and not just that. What do you see as the next step and how long of a process do you see? Will this be something that will be done in front of WrestleMania? Will it be something that you, you, you see carrying on past WrestleMania until they get Vince removed? You know, how big of a deal will it just be the family? Do you think barriers would come in or... Or, you know, Bruce Pritchard or any of it. How big of a deal do you think it is and how long do you think it will last? I don't think it's going to be long and I don't think it's going to be a huge deal. Uh, you had a big elaborate setup where we could have jumped off on many different side stories. I think this is going to just simply be Trips, Steph, and Shane removing him. Now, I don't know if that, I guess, uh, storyline-wise, because it's a company, they're going to have to... I don't know. I don't know if they've ever addressed something like that before. Like, uh, you know, are they all 25% of a vote? You know, do they depict it that way? And maybe they all vote him out. It could be something that simple. But it could be more elaborate than that. Uh, maybe at Mania. If you notice, Ric Flair was not at Ric Flair's party. Vince McMahon was not out. Yet, Dave Batista somehow managed to break into the uh, arena Maybe they go that route that, you know, Batista will be fighting for McMahon. Maybe McMahon brought him in, too. Uh, he obviously put Charlotte in the match, so maybe they tie a company uh, control 
to Kevin Owens and Charlotte and Batista somehow. Maybe a best of three. I don't know. They could. There's a bunch of things that they can do. But I think in the end, it'll probably end at Mania or before Mania. And it'll be Vince leaving, you know, so we can have the proper show that all the other McMahons want. What say you? So, I mean, I think that it makes... Here's where it makes sense to me. The fact that they brought Bruce Pritchard in. Somebody who Vince worked with for 18 years. Isn't that right? Mm Mm-hmm. So it's somebody, I guess, that Vince probably trusts, somebody who Vince is comfortable with. Uh, Vince probably feels like if he called Bruce Pritchard and said, hey, look, I like what you're doing, but you need to do this, this, and this, that Pritchard would follow through and do those things. If Vince would have chosen, say, Vince Russo as the guy right now, I don't know that Vince could be guaranteed that if he called Vince Russo and said, do this, this, and this, that Vince Russo would do it exactly like Vince said. So I think the timing of Pritchard coming in along with, you know, Vince inserting himself in these matches in this way, in the exact same way, screams that something is happening here. And then we also know that they have another writer coming in in a month. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shilling, I mean, everybody's talking about it. Yeah, yeah, everybody's talking about Shilling. <laughs> Bro, you know, it's funny. I can't even get it out and you're laughing. So. <laughs> We've been pushing Shilling big time on his show. He's yep. coming in in a month, you know. Uh, so who knows what his role is in this. I'm sure it's going to be elaborate. He's a big deal. Everybody knows who he is. His name is, you know, is a household name out there. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, dude, uh, I I do think that the timing of Pritchard coming in with this nonsense is happening tells me that something's going on. And I do. I believe that Vince McMahon may be walking away. And, you know, I don't know that it's going to be forever, Mm -hmm. but I I think he's going to be walking away for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to come on and say this again, reiterate it and maybe expand upon it a little bit because of what we saw last night. Captain of Swag was correct. I mean, it is a carbon copy of what's going on on Raw. But yet, the captain of swag doesn't think that it's a... He thinks, yeah, he thinks right now, he's probably saying, we are giving him way too much credit. He's just an idiot. Well, and we said that on that Sunday night show. We said we might be giving him way too much credit. But dude, here's the thing, and I think you will agree with this. If this is not an angle... This is probably the most incompetent that I have ever seen Vince McMahon in his running of the World Wrestling Federation, World Wrestling Entertainment, whatever you want to call it. Because if this isn't an angle, bro, this is crazy bad. It can't be. And there's there's two parts to this. I mean, if <clears throat> if it is an angle, I think... That he's making it easy. I think the carbon copy fact of this is because he's making it easy for us to identify it. But most of us, we refuse to believe that he has any genius left in that brain of his. But I think that's why he's doing it. And the other thing is, if this turns out to be all an angle to get him off TV and it's like a control power struggle between the McMahons, this is next level booking. And we have to give Vince credit for this. The old man still got it. Because if you look out at all the the main pundits, uh, your Meltzers, your Johnsons, your your uh, Satan, what's his name? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Satan. Ryan Satan. Uh, Ryan Satan. Uh, all those guys, they're not talking about this being a work. They're talking about how pathetically screwed up McMahon's booking is. Yeah, nobody – I, you and I searched the dirt sheets today for anybody talking about this being a work. Nobody's talking about it no. being a work. Nope. And to me, it's so damn obvious. It's unbelievable. You know, so – Yeah, that's the and, thing. He's not just going out there and interrupting matches. You know what I mean? He's not going out there and – he didn't tinker with the R-Truth United States title thing when Andrade came out and whoever else came out. He didn't tinker with that. He's tinkering in the exact same way with the title mm-hmm. that he did with Ronda's title. 
Now here's yeah. the thing, though. Now here's the thing. Let me let me ask you this. SmackDown opens up next week, and I made it a note that Daniel Bryan didn't say a word during that open last night. Right. He comes out on Tuesday, and if he goes in that ring and says, Vince McMahon, get out here now, and Stephanie McMahon comes out, and he takes that title off, and he says, this title's too important for you to be messing with Kofi Kingston. I want the best opponent. And he lays the title down and walks out. Then maybe we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but if he does that, then I think that, that even further cements. Like they're trying to scream at you. Don't you see what I'm doing here? <laughs> Why are you dirt sheet dope's going to get it? <laughs> and dude, you just talked a second ago. You said, you know, this is next level booking. And imagine if they would include in this as they're going through this, this you know, push for who who who's going to control the company just the little things that have happened in the past few weeks mm -hmm. him bringing in the nxt guys without telling triple h which the dirt sheets reported and dude if this all turns out to be true it you know we'll be able to see that he's been working the dirt sheets for you know a certain amount of time mm -hmm. even even last night dude the announcement that gargano would be taking on cesaro I mean, they could even work that into the story where Triple H could say, you know, my guy was supposed to wrestle Cesaro and Matt Hardy comes back and you change the match and you give the Hardys the match instead. I mean, and dude, if they would do that, that really is next level booking. I mm -hmm. mean, that's that's fantastic stuff. And at that point, you'd have to give it to the old man. Yep, absolutely. Could it be so next level that he may have purposely been booking these shows um, you know, since the rumble, purposely bad. Yeah, I mean, if if you if you and AC, what you said about him coming back when he came back, like, what if this is going on since then? That was like a, at the beginning of the new year where right. they came out and said, you know, things are going to change. We're going to give you more of what you want and all that bullshit. You know. Maybe he's been doing it like that ever since then. You know, he could be, I could, for as much as we kill him, you know, on a regular basis for booking, I can see him at his table with everybody around him. You know, probably, you know, for some reason I can picture him eating a root beer barrel. I don't know why, but I picture it a lot. We've probably got it in his mouth. Well, what are we going <laughs> to do now, guys? You know, and Dewey's Dewey, you know. Dewey, what are the what are all the podcasts saying out there, Dewey? Because that's what I pay you for. He'd probably say, "Well, everybody thinks you're crazy. Everybody thinks you're seventy three years old, and you don't know how to book a proper show anymore." And he's probably sitting back and sucking on the root beer barrel. He's probably going, "All right, pal, let's go with that." It could be that simple. Yeah. And boy, will we be surprised when it turns out, da -da, it was all storyline. Triple H is yeah. in charge, you know. <laughs> yeah, bro. Imagine, imagine him at the table and going, "Okay, that's the angle." And everybody's going, "What's the angle?" Right. What do we just said? <laughs> I'm the crazy seventy-three-year-old son of a bitch. <laughs> Watch me change all these matches that the fans want. Mm -hmm. I could see it, man. I could see it. It's very obvious now, dude. It's one thing that he did. Now, the one thing I am worried about is the reaction of of stephanie when he came out and did that it was like there was no like oh this is just dad doing what he does you know like it's no big deal uh you know i felt like they should have been a little bit more mm, upset about that i mean dude they had the participants in the ring about to sign a contract mm -hmm. for a championship match dad comes up and just blows it up now nah, we're not having that match. That guy right there, he's not good enough. I'm bringing this guy in. But there was a scene on Raw in the back, and it was very quick of her and Triple H carrying Ronda's belt. Yes. Very discussing fast. something. And they were discussing something like, what do we do now? That It was written all over their faces. So to me, there will be follow-up with all this. And again, that would be... That's a, It's a storyline that's playing out. I mean... so. Will we see Vince on Monday Night Raw knowing that they've already announced that 
Charlotte will be at Raw. Uh, I guess Charlotte wants to claim the championship belt that Ronda laid on the ground, you know, on, on the mat. So we'll see what happens there. Will Vince be a part of that? We'll see. Hmm. We're going to have to wait. You know what they could do? How it plays out. You know what they could do? If she doesn't want this belt, damn it. I'll I'll hand it to somebody. He just sticks it out and hands it to Charlotte. Do you know how pissed people would be if he just did that? And again, it goes with the story. He's losing control. He has too much power and that's going to piss off everybody on the show, all the characters, right? Yeah, sure. It should. It should. I I can see more build up here. We have we have a ways to go here till Mania. So maybe there will be build up every week. And maybe that would be smart. Make him go out and do crazy shit like that. Cuz it's got to get to a point where Triple H and Steph and Shane look look at each other and go, "All right, that's enough. That's enough. We have to stop him." What would be that tipping point where they just said, wait a minute, like, would it, would it be him interfering in the Brock Lesnar match? Would it be him pulling Seth Rollins out of that match? Maybe putting Ooh. Roman, Roman Reigns in. Or, oh, dude, there you go. And that will, be, will <laughs> that will get so much thing? more would, heat. No, yeah. you pull Seth for Roman. Yes. I mean, there'd be a lot of talk there at that mm-hmm. point. You know what he would. You know what he could do too to p- piss us off. Um, book some of the NXT guys in title matches because that yeah. would get us, like the po- the population that watches the show, like us, because we already did our bitching about the NXT guys and the debuts. All right, DIY for the titles against the revival. Because under a normal circumstance, you and I would flip out immediately, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, especially that we know what we know about what's coming up on NXT. I mean, for him to do that, DIY against the Revival for the titles, that would be insane. Dude, he's messing with us. I'm telling you, he's messing with all of us. I think so, too. And again, (laughs) if they're not... (laughs) <laughs> Listen to me out there. If this is not an angle that is leading to some sort of a power struggle storyline, then this man is truly incompetent at this point. This has to be it. To me, you said this to me on the Sunday show. You said, I'm convinced that they can't, you know, he's not this dumb. Right, right. And I said, ah, I don't know. You know, I, I gave my scenario that, you know, they could be doing this. But I, I, I did preface and say, we might be giving them too much credit. But after seeing SmackDown and what he did there, I'm with you now. I'm on board. There's no way he can be that dumb. There's no way he could be that <laughs> bad, that incompetent, that senile. But if he is, then he really does need to be removed one way or the other. Right. Leave it down in the comments if you're listening. We don't care who you are. If you're a stranger dropping in because you, you saw the title, whatever, tell us what you think. Put it down in the comments. We'd yeah, love maybe, to get some feedback. Maybe you think we're nuts. Yeah. And tell us we're think, nuts if we yeah. if you think so, yeah. If you think we're giving them too much credit and you don't think they're capable of this anymore. And look, we can't blame you. <laughs> no, of course not. from a recent history point of view, we have no evidence to combat you with. Mm-hmm. And we know that. We know that we are standing on the edge of the plank here. We get that. But it just seems like it can't. he can't be this... Like, I said to you today when we were talking about this, if he really was this bad, if this was real, somebody, when he said, I'm going to go out and I'm just going to take Kofi out of the match and I'm going to put Kevin Owens in the match, somebody, Road Dogg, Doc Hendricks, Triple H, Stephanie, Shane, somebody, Bruce Pritchard, somebody would have said, Vince, wait a minute, we can't, that's crazy. We can't do that again. You already did that once a couple hell, of weeks ago. Hell, Kevin Owens himself, if that was yes. the case, he might say, Vince, you just did this with Charlotte. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's got to be an angle. <laughs> it has to be, bro. It has to be. Now, here's the thing that worries me a little bit about it. Okay. Uh -huh. now, tell me if this is cause for concern or not. Well, we laid out, we pretty much laid out the angle. So let's now poke holes into it. Okay. Tell me what's okay. worrying you. The vignettes with Kevin Owens. Okay. He was at the movies. He was at the bowling alley. On this show, you said to me, it looks like they're setting him up to come back as the face of all faces. Mm -hmm. Well, here he comes back and Vince is turning him into the heel of all heels. Mm -hmm. But so, so, so that kills those two vignettes, absolutely kills them. There was no reason to ever do them. But if you look at it, he wanted to side with Kofi. So the, the established face character in the return is still it's still intact to me. He didn't force his way into the match with Kofi. Vince put him no. in the match. And and what's his character? He's a prize fighter. Yeah, I mean he was on social media saying and or in an interview saying, Well, what am I supposed to do? Turn down an opportunity like this? Right. Right. So he can come off like he's one upping Kofi, but he's not like he's staying well, to he his actually character. He had a lot of nice face. things to say about Kofi in that interview. Well, there you go. He said Kofi deserved it. Well, there you go. And that's another sign, too. Like, they ran two of those videos, and then all of a sudden he pops up. Again. Yeah, the, those videos, he was saying he was a month away. Right. So they, they rushed him just to take Kofi out? Or did Vince say, oh, that'll be perfect. I'll just, I'll just pull Owens in now. All the smart marks will think I'm crazy. <laughs> Which they do. Which they do. <laughs> yeah. Now, I did see, too, like Vince, I saw... Vince being Vince. I saw some some uh, pushback um, from certain from certain people about, uh, you know, he pulled Kofi off because he doesn't think he's a big enough star. He pulled Kofi out because he's black. Um, he pulled Kofi because he doesn't want the New Day affected by Kofi organically getting way too over, you know? And so, then you have that other crowd that says he pulled Kofi because he's saving Kofi for WrestleMania. Yes, and those are all valid points that could be possible. Mm -hmm. But just the fact that it's an exact copy of what's going on on Raw tells it's, me they're it's, doing it on purpose. It, yeah, it's uncanny. It's, it's, it's absolutely too uncanny. <laughs> and to, you know, to wait... To the contract signing to do it and then to come out and do that. Dude, it's just, it's uncanny. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a reason for it. There's got to be a reason for it. Well, like, you said, be. like you said earlier, you can, man, you can drag this out for a long time if you want to. I mean, there's a thousand ways they can go. Maybe one of the, uh, maybe he talks sense into one of the McMahons. Steph or Shane, and maybe they take his side. So then you have a built-in feud moving forward after he's, they get rid of him. However, they're going to do that. You know, maybe Shane carries on as Mr. McMahon, the character, if you know what I mean. And maybe Triple H is the good one or whatever, you know, something like that. So we know one thing that we would we would not expect Linda McMahon to be a part of this, right? Because she's in Washington D.C. right now. Yeah, I think that would make sense for casuals, but for the hardcores like us, the smarties, Barrios makes the most sense to me. Right, and he's never been on TV, as far as I know. Yeah, me, me neither. I mean, he's at all of those stockholder meetings. Mm -hmm. Now, can they bring can they bring back Johnny Ace for that? You know, put him out there and say, uh, Vince, we all, uh, the board voted and uh, you're out. Dude, you know what's funny about that is the reason I don't see that as working is I see the person who comes out and does this as somebody who is an intelligent person. And the way they had Johnny <laughs> when he was in there was everything but intelligent, okay? He, he, he was a hack, bro. Was who's, well, hack. who's the guy out there that's believable, that people, it's got to appease both sides. Yeah, I think it's got to be either Barrios or, or Schilling. 
one or the other. <laughs> they, have <a> choice. <laughs> they have a choice to make. Can they send Pritchard out? Yes, I think they could. Okay. Yep. That was actually one, you know, that was a part of my original big story, which mm -hmm. I think I may have overdone a bit. So, And the, you could go a million ways with it, too. Like, that could be enough. You know, maybe Vince walks out of the arena and everybody's saying, nah, 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 get out of here. And he's all pissed off and he walks out and rides off into the sunset. Or if they stayed true to his character, he's not going to go down without a fight. Right. So you can blow that up. I mean, I mean, he can go to Alistair Black and go, I gave you your shot, pal. Yeah. Well, could they do that? Could they have the wrestlers picking sides? If they want to go that far, yeah. I mean, you could split the entire roster down the middle. People and that then, are mad at Vince and people that are go good with Vince, you know? And then what happens to those people who were pro-Vince once they finally get rid of Vince? The story could continue. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand ways you can go. Let me ask you something, and I know you're you're not uh, like AC and me. We always talk in terms of faces and heels, and and you're a little bit more grayish when it comes to all that stuff. But in this storyline, if Vince is being forced out because he's crazy, and people know he's crazy, and people he's had a lot of heat with a lot of people, a lot of wrestling people over the last few years. Will Vince come out of this thing as the face or the heel? Oh, definitely the heel. He's the heel right now. I mean. He is the heel right now, but if he's the old man who's forced out, will it stay that way? No. And, and that's, it, it, well, they have to, this is what they have to do. If they want to keep it that way, then they can't put Becky in that match and they can't put Kofi in that match at Mania until he's replaced. That has to come from the baby face, whoever that is, Triple H, Shane, or Stephanie, or all three of them. As long as that's intact when Vince moseys out the door, then I think he stays the heel. Oh, my, because you see that. So that, But that would mean this all wraps up before WrestleMania. Yes, considering we're going to book it like we're like it's supposed to be, you know, Becky in the one match, Kofi in the other. And the other, the other hole I tried to poke in this earlier today was that there'd be a lot on Triple H in this because presumably he would be involved with this Vince story. And then he's got this other thing going on with Dave Batista. Although you said they could bring that all together. Oh, easily because. Like I mentioned before, Ric Flair's birthday, Vince was not out there. He may have let Dave in. Maybe I'm the one that called him, you stupid son of a bitch. I brought Batista back to take out Flair because I knew it would distract you. Ha 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 ha. Paul. I sent the text to me about Batista coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he brings Nash back to do that spot. <laughs> I sent the text. <laughs> but there's a million ways. And now we're probably at a point where we're overthinking things. But So to that person who's sitting out there right now listening, going, you guys are freaking crazy. <laughs> yes. We've seen this a million times. What do you say to that guy? Because we've seen this a million times, too. And we know that this could be just bad, lazy booking. It's a possibility. I mean, it, to me, it's a very small possibility at this at this, you know, time mm -hmm. after seeing Tuesday night. But what do you say to that fan that says no? What do you say to AC, who was the, the captain, who was out there last night doing his show, the Lone Wolf? And he said, no, I don't think it is a work. I think this is just Vince being Vince. I would say, if you look at the specifics, it's exactly the same. I would say, as a matter of fact, it was he that mishmashed the names together, right? Brian Rousey. Yep. Or Daniel, Daniel Rousey, you know, Kevin Flair, all that. It's right there staring at him. It's too obvious. It's too obvious. 
it's too obvious. That's what I would say. It's it's just too damn obvious that it's it's being done on purpose that way. And like I said, it he, it's not that he's interfer- interfering with 10,000 other things yet. It's these main titles. It's the main fan interest. It's almost like, yeah, they're telling the story of all these wrestlers. But right now, the story right now is Vince versus the fans. If you look at it, he's the biggest heel on the show. And who is he doing this? Who's he pissing off in the long run? It's the fans of Kofi and the fans of Becky. Yeah. Yeah, and both of these... Both of these characters, Kofi and Becky, the the following that they've gained has been pretty organic. Now, y- you you it. saying that AC would come back or whoever else is listening could come back and go, yeah, exactly. He cut off Becky's balls and he cut off Kofi's balls because that's what he does. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true. Right? Which is why that's why we have that. You know, as convinced as we are that it's too obvious and something has to be going on here, we still both have that little seed of doubt Mm -hmm. because we've seen it before. So they're right. But uh, right now, I'm standing with you. I think it's a work. I think the whole thing's a work. And how big it is, how long it goes, I think we're just going to have to wait and see. Next level booking. McMahon still got it. He still got it. We don't want to admit it, but he does. Let me ask you one final question. What do you need to see? I'm going to assume on Raw it's going to be the follow-up to Ronda laying down the title, right? Yeah, I would assume. What do you need to see? What scenario do you need to see that makes you say, all right, that shred of doubt that I had is gone. This is 100% a work. Well, I think what you said in this show, if he would take that belt and hand it to Charlotte and say, okay, you're the champ, that would be it for me. Because I know how he feels about Ronda Rousey. I heard his words at that shareholders meeting. He thinks she's the real deal and he would carry – her as his champion as long as she would have it. So if he would hand that title over to Charlotte, that would undoubtedly tell me he is, this is all the work, he is working everybody right now. That was That's all it would take for me. Second part question. I'm glad you answered that way. Second part is, what if he swerves us and says, okay, Rhonda, you don't want this belt? I'll give this to somebody. And there's Charlotte waiting to be handed the belt. And he turns around and goes, Becky Lynch. (laughs) And Becky comes down the aisle and takes the belt. Then I I would still be convinced it was a (laughs) work. That would prove he's mental. (laughs) That would prove that he's playing a mental patient right there. Come on. Three weeks ago, he suspended her for 60 days, and now he's going to hand her the belt. Come on. <laughs> you got what you wanted, fans. There's your champion. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> okay, so those are two extreme examples, right? And again, if you would start messing with the Brock match, I think that would be something that would really push it over the edge. And, dude, let's face it. This could be like a cute little – I mean, it, it proves two things. It, it fills up time to get you pumped for Mania. It's, you know, they have these filler pay-per-views. For better or for worse, it is what it is. So it's making those interesting too. You know, fast lane or whatever. Right. And it could get them off TV. So on multiple angles, it could just be a cute little story to fill time. But it also gets them off TV. I mean, if he would do that, like with Becky, at that point, Triple H might go, all right, that's enough. <laughs> he, he's completely lost his mind. We got to get him the hell out of here. Call, call Schilling. Have him vote. You know, and then the next week, Vince is going, what, what? I thought I suspended that other girl. What's her name? Sasha, where are you? You know, and he just goes crazy, and he's, like, banging his head, and then they take him out in a straight jacket, whatever. <laughs> oh, man. It'd be hysterical if they did something like that. That would be good. <laughs> I'm giving this belt to Bruno Sammartino. Yes. 
Mae Young. <laughs> Where's Mae? Get her out here. <laughs> Listen, you rattlesnake. <laughs> Bro, that would be great if they would do that, if they would actually make him that crazy. Now, right now, what we're seeing is you can't even really say for sure if it's crazy, but that would be funny to see to see him just get worse and worse every week and go off the deep end. <laughs> that would be very entertaining TV. You have to admit. Interesting enough, you said rattlesnake. Can you see Austin get getting involved here? Well, I guess, you know, if they do the thing where they have people come in and either take his side or go against him or whatever, I, I think, yeah, why not? Although we already have that with Kevin Owens, don't we? Well, the stunner looks just right. like Stone Cold. So. Same, same thing. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Same guy, same. Yep. I, I would say. So. <laughs> Who needs Stone Cold? <laughs> Stone Cold KO. Mm-hmm. You have anything else? No, I think we did it. Okay. I think we did it, too. It, it's all up to you, the fans out there listening. There's the comments. Scroll down. Say your piece. Let us know what you think. Is it a work? Is it just their incompetence? Or maybe you think it's a work, but you don't think it's going to work out the way we think. Maybe you have a different scenario. Put it down there. Let's hear your fantasy booking scenario. Yes, also, if you're feeling froggy, maybe you don't like what we said, but, you know, let us know. How is how does Becky get her way back in the match, and how does Kofi get his WrestleMania moment? What do they do? How do they get them back in? At Soldiers of Shoot. There you go. Everybody's pro, uh, Twitter handle is in the profile, so if you want to reach out to one of us, feel free. Anything else, sir? That's it. All right. We're out of here for Soldiers to Shoot, General Stames, and Hollywood Edwards. We are out.